Hello everybody, it's your girl Candy Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to, you know, to be back. You know, I haven't posted, I guess, for two days now, but you know what? You know, let's get straight into this one. And so this is a very interesting video, you know, Miss Trudy's day as a fisherman on Lake Victoria in Kisumu City. So that's in Kenya. So listen, most of you are watching my videos <laughs> But you're not subscribed, you guys, it's free, you know, it's just a way of showing me that you enjoy my content, that you like my reaction video, so feel free to subscribe, and you know what, more and more and more interesting content is coming up, so yeah, so make sure you subscribe, and of course, you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend to tell all of them, okay, so let's get straight into this video and oh my goodness i think i love it already because the life was a fisherman you have to wake up very early in the morning if not at night um to go fishing so let's see if miss trudy had a lovely time what were the challenges and so on and so on so let's go and no one is rowing the boat all of us are just chilling I'm, this is not easy yeah. yo two hours on water i've never been on water this long <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness if you're scared of fish then it's not a it's not a good idea <laughs> to go fishing if you're scared of fish but i know some people who like the fish on their plates but not a real fish like a living fish i would say so okay and as for the boat yeah i feel like the boat goes with the tide or the wind you know um so and i guess that's the um the best thing that you know that I, I think that's the best part about fishing itself. It's small. You never respect someone's work mm -hmm. until you put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. As a fish woman, I think I deserve. I deserve to eat. No, I deserve to have. <laughs> That looks so good. Oh my goodness. That looks like some fish, some sukuma wiki. So that is kale, some kachumbari on the side. Mmm, it looks so good. And yeah, Miss Trudy said something very interesting is you never know uh, someone struggles until you get to, you know, you get to do them yourself. So that's why it's very important to be nice to everybody. When you meet people, just be nice to them. You never know what they're going through. You never know you might maybe save their life if they wanted to you know, take away their life. You never know you might brighten their day. Just be nice to everybody because you never know the struggles they're facing. So I personally no longer judge people. When you know when sometimes you meet people in town and like, oh my God, they're, I mean, you should smile a little bit, but oh my goodness, you never know uh, what that person is going through. Um, as you meet them and more so if you don't know them personally. So just be nice to everybody. It's free and you can save someone's day. <laughs> Morning guys, how are you doing? I hope you are doing amazing. So I just woke mm -hmm. up. This is oh, it. from the braids, it looks as though she actually filmed these videos before Wodemaya came because she was in Kisumu with her dad. So I guess there are so many other videos from Kisumu, Kisumu uh, coming up. So, okay, so from the braids, I thought she made this. Okay, yeah, so everything is just falling into place. So she made this video before her baby came home. This is a day we're going to see the life of a fisherman. Right. Actually, I'll be a fisherman for a day. Should I say fisherwoman? Right. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Do you call a woman who fishes a fisherwoman? Well, probably not years ago, but today I think you can say a fisherwoman because they're feminizing so many words, um, you know, just to try, you know, with this man, man woman equality thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if. A fish the feminine of fish a man is a fish a woman so let me know let me know in the comments below how, how should i put it what do you call a what do you call a woman who fishes anyway if you're new to this channel right. welcome i love you already thank you so much for mm -hmm. clicking right. yeah okay most of us at least love eating fish but do you know the right guys so honestly if you're in this uh family the connie gang welcome if it's your first time, make sure you subscribe. Don't go any farther. Just make sure you subscribe because you will get some dope content. And you, if you have been in the family, thank you so much. I appreciate the support. The family is growing, you know. 
So I'm really, really grateful for each and every one of you. Process it goes through before it gets to your plate. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm going to show you the process. So you've got to stay tuned in and watch to the very end. We're going to meet fishermen. We're going to go deep into Lake Victoria and then we're going to fish with them. We're going to see how they come back to the island, how they sell, um, how they sell the fish, mm -hmm. how it gets fried, and finally gets mm -hmm. on your plate. So yeah, spend the day with me as I show you a day in the life of a fisherman. <sighs> Guys, so just left my hotel. Um, that's the guy who's taking us to the beach. Okay. Don't think he's seen me. Sister, <laughs> make sure. <laughs> Okay, it looks like it's going to be the, uh, what do you call it? It's not the active fishing, but I mean, she's just going to visit the lake and see. Um, how, because I feel what those who do like active fishing are actually out fishing at night. I think it's easier for them to catch the fish because the fish is are normally attracted by the light. So I don't know, there are different types of fishing techniques. I'm not a specialist at all, okay? But... I guess that um, when it comes to active fishing, most of the time it's at night, then they can sell it early morning in the afternoon, in the morning, sorry, early morning, and then, you know, to the restaurants, to the market and stuff like that. So I guess it must be early morning, but on the other hand, she's just there to discover the, um, the fishing. Guys, so right now we are in a tuk tuk. We are trying to rush because we are quite late. Mm. We're supposed to be at the lake by 6.30 latest, turning to 7 a.m. Mm. But we made a call and we told the fishermen are still there. So we're trying to rush and get there before they leave. Yeah, so stay tuned in. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll let you know as soon as we get there. In the meantime, cross your fingers for us. I'm so excited about this video. I really hope it goes well. So yeah, I, I have a feeling it will go really well. I'm super, 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 super excited. So stay tuned. Wow. <laughs> the guy is telling her that they've slept too much. You know that they're late. Some people have already taken off, and yeah, so sh she's quite late. Just a little late. I hope everything is okay still. <laughs> guys, this is very, very interesting. So, us guys, we just got here and we are being shown this is a life of fisherman. Yeah, I was going to say, let me see if I can rewind a little bit. I was going to say, uh, you know, Lake Victoria a few years back, it was full of hyacinth, it was in oh my god, infested. You know, it was like a green lake because hyacinth was a plant that actually covered the whole lake. And so it was not good, first of all, because fishing is the number one activity, economical activity in the area, in the Kisumu area. And then second of all, there are the like big, big uh, how, how can I say, um, suppliers of fish, you know, in Kenya. So there was like a very, it was a big problem. And if my memory serves me right i think they introduced some insects into the lake who ended up eating up all the hyacinth and that's why today the kisumu lake is clear again and you know i mean now the activities are back to normal so let me know down below in the comments if if i'm right because i i have a doubt but i believe it was like they introduced some insects into the lake to actually eat up the vegetation the hyacinth um, vegetation and so that's the reason why today the lake is back to normal again let me know let me know guys we just got here and we are being shown this is wow. a lake of fishermen now when you're getting here there are some who are fishing overnight and they're actually coming back by right now right. Mm -hmm. i think fishermen <laughs> are very hard working right. and their work is really underrated look at the beauty of this man look at the eyes Look at how he's just staring, I don't know, at whatever in the, you know, and let me tell you guys, people from Kisumu, Kisumu really believe in themselves. The women believe that they're beautiful, you know, the men as well, you know, they believe in themselves, the person that they are, 
they're hardworking. And so this picture is so beautiful. I love it. This image really, I think it's Ben who captured this one or Trudy, whoever did it. It's beautiful. I love it, love it. Are you kidding me? That's fish. I think the nets that we are seeing on the boat is actually fish. This is so interesting. Yeah. I can just imagine the smell on the port. I will. I can just imagine the smell. I guess it's not so pleasant, but I think with time you just get used to, you know, the smell of fish um, at the port. So when some of you guys are busy sleeping, you guys are busy working hard, fishing over when it's dark in the right. lake. So the, the fishermen have just come with the fish and you can see women here with um, basins. So what are the women doing here? Oh really? So they are buying the fish straight from the fish. Right. I didn't know that. Fresh. Fresh from the lake. Guys, so fish here is extremely fresh. Straight out of Lake Victoria. What? Right. So this fish that is just arriving and you already have women here. This is insane. Did, guys, did you know that's how it works? I honestly didn't know, so I'm, okay. I'm so impressed. So this <laughs> Let me tell you, when you travel, be it in your country, out of the country, you get to you get out of your comfort zone and get you get to see things that you never thought existed. And that's why you realize, like the businessmen, like the millionaires, that's why they love traveling, because they go to different places, they discover new things, and they implement them in the country, and that's how... I mean, if the you, you cannot reinvent the wheel, you can't. You take what is already existing, you introduce it to a place where it doesn't exist, or you improve it. So that's I think that's why traveling is very important because you get to discover so many things, and yeah, you can you can make a nice bag if um I mean you know if you're a business person. These so are the women who fry. I guess they fry your fish in the streets. Or take them now to Nairobi or other mm -hmm. places in Kenya. Right. It's quite impressive. We are now. We want to now go into the lake. So we have life jackets. <laughs> yeah. And guys, to be honest with you guys, even with a life jacket, I'm not. I I'm not comfortable in water. I mean. Okay, let's say things as they are. Okay, so let me just give you a short story. Uh, just before Corona, it was like three years ago, I went to Spain on holiday. And so we went into the Mediterranean and so we just wanted to go snorkeling and everything. So the kids went into the water, the father went into the water, but I was petrified, really, literally, you know, and I can, I can float. I can't swim like, I don't know, the butterflies, the what, the what, the back flip, all those things. I can't do that. And I'm not comfortable in water when I'm not touching the ground, you know? And so I was so, I was like, I was so disappointed in myself that I decided to take some swimming lessons and then Corona hit. And then, so I can't, I'm really looking forward to go to, to have some swimming classes so I don't fear being in water. So even with my life jacket on, I didn't feel safe at all. I felt like if I, would to, if I was to fall into water, then that would be the end of me. So yeah so i don't know if you guys know how to swim let me know in the comments below if you're a good swimmer or if you're just a floater like i am because my goodness it's terrible i'm super super excited you guys it's crazy as you can see behind me the sun is just starting to rise it's not exactly out and i forgot my sunglasses you guys i'm gonna be okay though so this is us getting ready to go in so now we are boarding the boat <laughs> Guys, so we have just set off. Hey, the sunrise on her face. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. We're trying to balance on the water because we've been told this, this boat is different. It's not the one that is powered by, by motor mm -hmm. or engine. This one, as you can see behind me, you have to row it. And they also depend on the direction. I love that. I, I love that image. I love it. This one, as you can see behind. Yeah, that one. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so nice. You 
have to row it. Mm. And they also depend on the direction of the wind. Oh, yo, how do fishermen do this? If you're a fisherman, drop a comment, man. Yani, I respect you. Don't even understand the level of respect. This is not easy, yo. So now we are we are also gonna be depending on the direction of the wind to do what this. Huh? Land breeze. Hey, say hi. Tell me who you are. Hi. As you can see behind me, there is more fishermen who are fishing at night coming back. Oh, guys, it's so beautiful. See how they just opened it up. So now we are just gonna be sailing with the wind. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. Then we'll go back with the sea breeze. Oh, okay. Wow. How far are we going? Yeah. Less than 10 kilometers. Less than 10 kilometers. Okay. Wow. How do you know? Yeah, I'm from Sydney. Guys, so cool. Oh my gosh. We're literally moving with the wind. You know, the direction the wind is going, the direction the wind is blowing is the direction we are going. Quite impressive. First time having this experience. I don't know, you know, what do you guys think? Have you had this experience before and where was it? Yeah, leave a comment, let me know. There's overfishing in the lake. There's a lot of pressure in the lake. So, uh, we have come in the aquaculture system where you rare fish in the lake. Mm -hmm. So, as, as you can see, the... We're using the fish cage. Uh, a cage. That cage is fish inside. Okay. I guess that's uh, fish farming. I think it's like the least. I, I I don't like that kind of farming because it's not natural. I would rather just go deep into the sea or the ocean or whatever and and uh, fish because these are natural fish and I guess they're healthier in a way. So because when you have a fish farm, you have to feed them with you know with food so they can grow faster. Of course, they grow faster. And that's why the um, you can like sell them all over the country, for example. But is it the best type of food? I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. That house is for the spirit. This food is taken care mm. of. That's working out. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, it looks like a lighthouse, you know. I guess at night they light it up. But I guess he said security. I don't know. Why? Why? Why do they have security? Have 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 they been stolen before or what? Yeah, the first time it was stolen. Okay. Yes. The well, people were just counting. After up to seven months, you know, they took to see my They came at night and they they stole. Yeah, they stole. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, I usually see in movies, especially white people, they love going fishing. It's apparently an activity for them. You know, father and son, they bond by going fishing. Mm -hmm. Let me know, are you Luo? Are you from here? Do you do that? Do you go, do you come fishing for, you know, just to, is it an African thing? Is it? No. Not really. It's not an African thing. <laughs> no. But you see it in movies. But you know, Luo is an yeah, you see it in movies, but I confirm in real life it happens like that in, in Europe. So, mostly it's, a, it's like traditional way yeah, of activity. Yeah. yeah, so the main activity is fish. How many types of fish do we have in Lake Victoria? Mm, do you know? That's a good question. The common one that is eaten a lot, I would say the tilapia in, in maybe in, in Lake Victoria and the the tilapia and the Nile perch, I would say. Tilapia and Nile perch. Because tilapia, you find it a lot uh, in the market. And Nile perch is a little bit more expensive. But those are, I would say those are the top two uh, types of fish that you can find in Lake Victoria. Am I right? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, we have many yeah, the major fish. Nile perch. Nile perch. Nile perch. I've tried different types of fish, but for me, guys, for me, tilapia does it. Some fish right. just taste weird, yo. Like catfish. Let's say catfish. There's another one that just tastes like rubber. What is it That's called? Ah. It's like, now what is this? Why am I spending my money on this? I'd rather buy tilapia. Something tastes yeah. good. And then you can cook it very differently. You can make fish fillet, fish fingers. You can eat it as fish. Yeah, but the fish fillet is more with the, the Nile parch. I guess you have like thick... Uh, um flesh i would say uh compared to the til to the to the tilapia one i would say the nile perch is best for the fillet hey, she, uh, now i'm starting to salivate <laughs> when i'm talking about this but the nile perch the bigger ones you do fillet oh, yeah. all right you see that's what i thought yeah i remember that's what that's how it is to export talking about exporting fish is it how is it like um is it a good business uh, and, and 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 does much of the fish uh gotten from Lake Victoria is it exported or is it used locally due to the challenges of COVID export is, is, is a challenge some uh, 10 years back Kenya used to do good uh, in uh, exporting fish the night, but, yeah. mm -hmm. even Kenya and Uganda and Arangol is about Mgingo Island because we have a lot of fish like Nile perch did you issues. mention Mgingo yes. did you just mention Mgingo yes. Island hey don't start that guys oh my gosh did you guys follow the story about migingo island where um, kenya and uganda were arguing no. about who owns migingo are you ugandan leave a comment oh i had no idea i've never heard about this story okay so who owns it now i need to find out you know i really okay since 2004 okay all right, I had no idea. I've never heard about Migingo Island. And let me know if you know um, who it belongs to. Does it belong to the Kenyans or the Ugandans? It's just like uh, in France, it's it's the Mont Blanc, so that's in the Alps. So that's the mountain, which the highest mountain. And so the France and Italy actually have a dispute when it comes to uh, the, where who I mean where the mountain, which in which country the mountain actually. Uh, belongs to so yeah let me know I, i've never heard about this you see i'm so happy to have watched this video i had no idea about the mgingo island that um okay let me know in the comments below if you know who won is it kenya or uganda or do they find like a compromise where both countries have access to the island kenya and uganda were arguing about who owns mgingo mm -hmm. are you ugandan leave a comment let me know do you own mgingo <laughs> or is it just kenya thing someone said the island is kenyan but then the water belongs to uganda <laughs> did they finally settle the mgingo case did they drop a comment right. they, haven't they haven't settled but uh, now kenya and uganda people just yeah so oh, oh that's so sweet now apparently Kenyans and Ugandans just fish together. That's nice. Okay. That's how neighbors should live. All right. Active fishing is uh, normally done uh, above two people for for uh, the others it can be done like recent fishing can be done but uh, still like even six or seven. They work at night. That's Basini, what's it? 
Generally in the morning, then active fishing, you go with your fishing gears, whether it's uh, nets or hooks and lines. Like right. you see, are many boats are going, most of them are for hooks and lines. Eh? You set your net, then you you continually fish. Dormant fishing, you set, then you go the next day, like now we are doing a uh, dormant fishing. Oh. Mm-hmm. We have already set it. Eh? Okay, okay, but how do you set it in the lake? Is there like anchors or something where you set the net? We have stones that uh, work as uh, anchors. If okay. I get to fish in the Victoria right now, yeah. I'm the one who's done the fishing. Yeah. It's my fish, right? I can go and cook it and eat it. Yeah, it's oh, it's my fish. So there's no artistry because you fished here. It has to. Yeah, but I think you need a license. Yeah, you can fish, but you need a license. Go through. I don't know who. But uh, you, you must have license. All right. License to fish. Yeah, you must. Have what, license. guys? Did you know that you actually need a license to fish? I didn't know that. Is it expensive to get a fishing license? Yeah, but it's affordable. But uh, there is uh, one method which, which you don't need, not uh, license. That, uh, that hand and line. Hand and line. Okay. Yeah, hand and line. As key, then you put a hook. That one you can put that license. Okay. Guys, do you know that Lake Victoria, which is where we are right now, actually has over 1,000 islands, not 100, 1,000 islands. That's mm. crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Saying, yeah, that's what saying. That's what they have access that grandfather did. They are so that they own that island. Who, who owns the place? It's a family. Oh, a family owns the island? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Must be yeah. nice. Ndere National Park is apparently the only island which is, has a national park on uh, Lake Victoria. Mm-hmm. I'm still not over the fact that we are actually using land breeze to move. Yani, no one is rowing the boat. All of us are just chilling and the wind is just blowing right. and we're just going with it. This is just... Oh my goodness, what a privilege to be an ambassador for your country, you know? Because I feel that's what Mr. D is and many other YouTubers who are actually showcasing Africa in your own countries. And I, I just love it because... You know, it's a job because it's a full-time job for her and other YouTubers. But on the other hand, you're enjoying life. You know, you, you do you see what I mean? And I feel it's like the best thing because we spend so much time at work. If you don't like your work, then it's quite challenging. So just to be in the nature, doing your job, but, but enjoying the moment as well. You can't even sleep. I think I would just fall asleep because of the breeze and the calmness of the place, you know, just being in the middle of, you know, the lake, you know, like that. It's fantastic. I love it. And then when you think that this lake was infested in hyacinth, I can't believe it has become so clear now, you know. Just something else, you know, just shows how great God is. You know, things right. like this just make me feel like, oh my mm. gosh, like God is so amazing. Apparently, we're going to be coming back to the sea breeze because the direction of wind will have changed. And this is how fishermen live their lives. Mm. So now when we are here in Lake Victoria, I'm feeling so relaxed. It's so soothing. It's very quiet. You know, mm. it feels so good. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to describe it. We're still moving. I'll catch you guys when we get there. A few moments later. Oh. Guys, we've been on the lake for about two hours now. I've slept, I've woken up, we're still on the lake, it's crazy. Yeah, that's what I was saying, like, you can just sleep. Personally, I know I love that kind of ambiance where you, you're just in the calm and you have some some breeze in your face it, it just suits me and just you know cuddles i i just love it i i would sleep as well i know right yo see this is a fisherman like he's in his comfort zone some of us here <laughs> some of us here struggling Oh, like it's so scary <laughs> now where we are we can hardly see land okay we can see some hills far and mm-hmm. that's about it i just pray to god that everything goes well two hours on water i've never been on water this long man the last time i was in kisumu there was a lot of higher scene. all right okay. yeah that's what i'm talking about you can you imagine for a second that this this is the lake that we're seeing right now this is the actual lake it was green it was a green lake with some vegetation called the hyacinth, but I I think they put some insects in there to, you know, 
to eat the, the, the plant and clear the lake. I don't if let me know. Let me know if it was like insects. What was it? Because I know they tried so many techniques. They tried weeding it out, but it, it kept growing, you know. Then they came up with an insect that eats um, hyacinth. <clears throat> But then they got rid of them, yeah? Oh, guys, if it's, if, you, it's, if it's been a while since you came to Lake Victoria, when you come, you'll be shocked because it's clear now. You remember mm -hmm. the last time you were here, it was so green, lots of high mm -hmm. But apparently it was cleared using the insects. That's, that's, oh, that's right. That's something. Catfish. Yo, so where, where did this, this, this boat is not leaking, right? Where has this water come from? Uh, it's leaking small. Not hey, uh, yeah, but that's normal for a boat. Because I remember, I don't know if you guys remember as kids, um, I remember my dad used to take us to um, Uhuru Park. Uh, and there was like a small lake. I think it was like an artificial lake where there were boats and it would go and row boats. And there was always like water in the boat. So that's really normal. I think it's even healthy for a boat to leak a little bit, especially the small ones. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's okay. I'm, I've always been told that it's normal, so I hope it is. <laughs> small space, just to maintain the wood. Right, yeah, just to maintain the wood, absolutely, yeah. So it's important to have, you know, just a little bit of leaking, um, you know. This is the first fish we've caught today. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so excited. I think it looks like a catfish, is it? You know? It, but it, I never... Okay, yeah, it looks. It really looks... Let me know in the comments below what's the name of the fish. Yeah. Yo, I've never gone fishing before. This is quite the deal. Apparently, there's always a first time for everything. You guys, you'll be told that water needs to enter the boat to maintain a certain kind of balance and mm. avoid scratching. I'm happy because okay, it's a first time it's fishing like, and it's pretty cool. However, I feel guilty like no, uh, this is on the, you know, like, mm. and they look like babies. You know, now their parents will be looking for them. <laughs> oh my gosh, she sounds like somebody I know. I she sounds like somebody I know. It's always like, oh my god, the parents are going to look for the for it, like if it's a spider or an insect or yeah. I mean, if you can imagine if actually because insects and fish and whatever they 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 have they're alive so they have family you know they probably have friends i don't know so yeah i think it must be a tragedy when we fish them or when we kill an insect for the rest of the of the family the children the husbands well well i understand you miss trudy let's just say i understand you <laughs> You guys, I always have this question in the back of my mind. Can you imagine if, when finally, after everything is said and done, you know, we realize that we have sinned against God by eating things like fish and chicken and cow? I don't think so, because he gave them to us for our food, so... <laughs> because personally, I can never go vegetarian. I can't. I love my, my nyama choma so much. I love my kuku choma so much. I love my fish so much. So I, I would never go vegetarian. Never, never, never. Like if God says, like, these are my creatures and they created them and you guys decided to kill them and eat them. <laughs> well, how, how, how would you answer? You guys ever think of that? Yeah, it's peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, it's crazy. Ben never says much, but when he says something, it's funny. Just listen to that again. Listen. Each 
creatures and they created them and you guys decided to kill them instantly. What, how, how, how would you answer? Do you guys ever think of that? Me, I eat peacefully. Right, me too. I eat peacefully. 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 I agree with you, Ben, 100%. <laughs> so the same way you said that they want to be a vegetarian when they thought about that a lot. And then I was yeah. like, I was tempted to eat with them. So guys, know the channel that you're very wicked. You never get this chance to tell your family goodbye. <laughs> Showing you the life of Benny, Ben, you're so you're a sadist. Why? Just leave it alone. It's already dead. Just let it die in peace, right? Fisherman straight out of Lake Victoria here in Kisumu, Kenya. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I, I, I feel like I should stand and move around, but you know, we're in the middle of the lake, so I can't do that. <laughs> So from what I've understood, the, the the gentleman has just said is the Nile patch is more nutritious compared to the tilapia, and that's the reason why it's more expensive, and it can grow bigger, and then you can make some nice fish fillets. So yeah, I, I I didn't know they were like more nutritious, but it makes sense because they are more expensive than the tilapia when you buy them. Other ones are quite small because it's not fish season, but this one, this one is big. Mm. This is the cheetah. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment. Let us know. <laughs> See, it's even stressing him to get it off the net. Three hours since we left the show. Now we fished. It has been such an interesting experience. Oh, it's even starting to get hot. I think I should remove my jumper. Never done this before. A day with fishermen. I've learned so much. I really respect their work. Anyway, now everything is teeming. Everything is dear la la. If you're if you're low, you know what I'm trying to say. We are we are heading back to the show, which is gonna be another another two hours back. Can somebody tell me what Tibin means? You know? What exactly does it mean Tibin? Let me know if you're Luo, if you're from Kisumu, or if you're not Luo but you know what it means. Let me know in the comment section below. The show Aish. Now the sun is out. And because there, there's no sea sea breeze, now they are rowing. Something is rowing behind there. Mm. And him is also rowing on this other side. This must be very tiresome, oh, man. Now if the siblings <laughs> doesn't come in row until you get to the show. Yeah. Hey! Before we need to back out. Wow. Yep. Good night, Mr. D. Good night. <laughs> wow. Many hours later. Guys, so finally, finally, after five hours, yo, it's been crazy. I'm, I was so sweaty. I'm feeling so hot. She's looking nice. How old is Miss Trudy? How old is she? Let me know in the comments. She, she looks in her 20s, of course, but is she under 25 or over 25? Let me know if you know. I've never been, you know, in water that long, in the ocean, in a water body. Like, so, yeah, so this was quite interesting. It was, it was very, very and I started enjoying it even more when you are just getting close to the land. You managed to get a couple of fish. Now what you're going to do is fry this, you know. Basically, we are showing you how the fish moves from the lake to your plate. One thing I've learned with you guys, you never respect someone's work until you put yourself in Look, Look at the art. You never respect someone's work. Yeah, look at that, made of, you know, I guess, all the waste in the ocean that was collected. So that's, and you have a similar thing in Mombasa, but it's a crocodile. Is it a crocodile in Mombasa? I think so. So, and I guess it's a nice initiative just to show, just to sensibilize people not to throw people into the lakes, into our oceans and, 
it's good to preserve, you know, the diversity of, you know, the different, uh, you know, the fauna and the floor. So, yeah, it's a nice, I love it. Let me tell you guys, I have a horrible time with, um, what do you call that? What do you call the, um, what's the name again? You know, when you remove the scales, right? We call them the scales. Oh, I, I won't even rewind. I'm sorry. I, I just hate, and I've always hated it. I remember when I used to buy fish or, and I would see, you know, people doing, removing the scales. I would, it's just too much. A lot of small, tiny little things. Um, I think it's just, I think I have a phobia with that. I don't know. I just don't like when there are too many things together like that, <laughs> you know, so, oh, so I prefer just, you know, when the fish is ready without the scales and then fry it. Mm. Fish, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned mm. something new. Mm, I'm hungry. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. With some kills. And I guess with some ugali on the side. I think it's best with ugali. Some people like chapatis on the side or rice, but I feel ugali is the best. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Yeah, as a fish woman, I think I deserve. <laughs> right. I deserve to eat. No, I deserve to have myself some fish. Mm. Well, guys, listen. That was really interesting. You know. Like I told you guys before, I've never been to Kisumu, right? If you haven't watched the video I reacted to from African Tigress when she went, you know, when she went around Kisumu City and I've never been there before. And one of my subscribers said that I should watch the latest one from Miss Trudy Welcome, So it must be the one on the screen right now. So I will make a point of reacting to that one too, because apparently it's the recent one and we get to see so many uh things about kisumu and yo so this was a very nice uh very nice uh video because we got to learn so much nice to see that the hyacinth disappeared it's over and now um you know life in kisumu is back to normal especially for the fisher men and the fisher women let me know if you say fisher women as well so thank you so much guys for watching uh, i hope you enjoyed it and if you did Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. And so until next time, thank you so much for watching and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.